Do any of you guys know exactly what the Garden City movement is? So today I'm just going to give you guys a very brief example of what that is and basically why it is good to implement that in future city design and how it makes the city function a lot better. So just quickly from the last episode, this is what we worked on. Uh, it is a new, basically a new town and um, doesn't it look good? I personally do like this and this design uh, well, I should sh I should probably say this project um, is part of the Garden City movement. So, what is it, and why should you use it? And I actually do use it. I just never mentioned it before. I feel like there's a lot of things I do, but I just never mention it. So, the Garden City movement is well, my version of the Garden City movement is based from the old one, but I've kind of changed it, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why it's different. So. The Garden City movement is basically when, actually, you know what, let's just use trees to design this to show you guys because that is the best way. So if we have, where are the trees? This is so silly, but I'm using trees. So if we have, let's say this is your downtown, right? You might also have a smaller downtown district here. Another one here, another one here, here, and here. So basically, this is the Garden City movement and the original design was let's say for example you have a main road connecting it up here 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 and here and then there's also a main road going all the way around so so the original plan was that between each major city point there was like gardens and farmlands and everything else that you need in between nowadays you'll find in these areas here it's just a lot of um just suburbs pretty much but the good thing about this is that it really spreads out your downtown so instead of having so many people coming into the downtown the downtown you're basically creating mini downtowns throughout your city so if we look at Inselstadt so far this is our downtown right so if we go over here this is basically another downtown district on the outskirts of the town there's another one here another one here a little one here um, and then I'm going to make one over here as well. So it's just reducing the amount of emphasis or the amount of traffic coming into this area. Um, and it's just creating a lot more other smaller districts. So instead of people ha driving all the way out here, trying to go all the way into the downtown, they can basically just go from here to their mini downtown area. And it is, it is really common to find it nowadays. It's just something that's not really talked about at all outside of the town planning world. So that is pretty much the Garden City movement. So you have your downtown, then you have mini downtowns throughout the whole area that have good transport, good roads linking them all up. And it is quite effective. So it just reduces the amount of huge downtown area. So yeah, that is why you should use it. If you guys like, I could probably go through different ways and methods um, cities have been designed, some that are effective, some that are not. So that is something that I was thinking about doing. So anyway, from the last video, I wanted to add in residential areas. This is what we have, well, what I've done so far. And um, it is, it is alright, I think. So I continued on the fancy residential area from here over to this side beside the castle. And doesn't it look good? Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, so there is a nice transition between the shopping area into the residential area so these ones around here are commercial that slowly transitioned into residential and there's a little bit of commercial here we've connected up the bike lanes and yeah doesn't it look good so now it is kind of not so out of the ordinary looking before I added in all of these houses it looked really out of place so the next thing we want to do is we need to expand all of these areas out here that is also still part of the Garden City movement so you have the downtown and then you have the surrounding suburb areas so I might even do another mini downtown area just here as well where these intersections meet and we can also rely on the train station as well so that is a possibility so yeah has anyone heard of the Garden City movement before um, I feel like the actual Garden City movement isn't really in place specifically in terms of all of the um, like the farmlands in between. I don't think you really find that because it's always been consumed up by urban growth. So, so if we, in terms of how I've laid this out, so we have two bikeway connections. I didn't put any connections in there just because I couldn't be bothered. And so we have this main road with these trees at right 
these trees right here. So I use those trees just to continue on with the same theme as the shopping district. And so this is the main road going through. Um, you see there's not really that many connections going through there because I knew that it would be a major busy road. Well, it's not too busy yet, but I feel like it will be in the future, so we don't want to add too many connections. Um, for now, it is going quite well. And I like the, the design I used as well because it has the main road going through, going through over here. There's one that goes directly through. And I feel like all of them probably have a good view from wherever they are because it is on uh, part of a hill. So yeah, it is quite good looking. And um, I feel like soon we really need to put into public transport. That is something I've been neglecting for so, so long. And let's just demolish this. Let's remove these trees because it looks a little funny. Also down here, I put in the education facility. So we have, I think these are actually both primary schools and that's a high school uh, right outside the bus stop. So that's really handy. Next. And then I also put one up here as well. As of right now, there are 6,000 people living in this district, um, but we can probably extend it up to about there, probably, probably to about that road there. And um, that should probably do for this mini downtown area. And um, yeah, so I actually really like how it's turning out. To me, it looks really realistic. And um, yeah, I just like it so far. So guys, for the rest of the video, I think I might just do some more designing like this around the suburb. Um, so I like using these these curves in this area, kind of keeping it in the same style as these here, um, because I feel like, remember in the last video, I said my inspiration is from Rabina Town Center. Um, Rabina Town Center has a lot of these nice curves in the whole area. So that is why I am using this same type of design. And you know what? As soon as I started talking just then, the construction outside started grinding something. They do this every single time. Like, I kid you not. It, they're always doing something as soon as I start talking. Like, I just sat here for probably, how long was it? Six minutes because they were doing something the whole time. They stopped. I start talking. They start grinding. So annoying. So over it. Ugh. So if you can hear that, please try to ignore that. So, yes, I want to do some more designing around here. Um, I don't think I'll add in many more large roads. I want to rely on what we have so far. So this area, it is very um, car orientated. I mean, yeah, we have the bike lane here, but still that bike lane isn't really going to go to many areas because it's very low residential. Um, implementing the bike lane over roads like that into the low residential low residential areas might seem not really cost effective so but we'll try to work it in wherever we can
Okay guys, so that was actually a lot of designing, but the issue I was having is what should I do underneath the train line? So for over here, um, this is all just going to be low residential, uh, and the train line is just going to stay. So I'm going to put some trees through here, so that will hopefully reduce the sound going through here. And um, yeah, that's the only thing I could think of. And then for over here, so you'll notice up here the roads are kind of wavy but then when you get back down here they're kind of a little bit more straighter the reason being is because of the train line so for the train line area through here it's going to be a mixture of commercial and office just through this part here uh, and then once you get up here it's more residential uh, just because i think if you lived right here next to the train that's up really high it's just not it's just not very nice unless i feel like it's only acceptable for really low socioeconomic people no offense to them but that's the only time I think it's okay so yeah this is all going to be office commercial and um, yeah so I like these types of designs they're wavy so we could probably do some more of those out through here they're kind of estate type style um, building as well and uh, I put a little wall barrier here just to make it seem a little bit more fancy and these guys have actually quite a good view of the city and the water it's actually quite hilly through this area I didn't realize but I like that, it makes it more interesting to work with. So, um, I'm going to end the episode here. I'm actually not feeling the best. I, I do have a cold right now, so I might sound a little funny. And I kind of just want to go rest and do nothing. So this video is going to end here. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. And um, yeah, let me know what else I should build in this area. There's still these spaces here. But it can't be too noisy because it is a very residential oriented area. But um, it is also very car orientated as well. So we have that option to do. I don't know yet. We just have that space. I feel like I can't really think. But um, also just before I go. I just wanted to say. I feel like I want to start doing more of myself on camera. And when I say myself. Let's just go to that view there. When I say myself. I feel like I want to show my face more. But I do have a little bit of a fear of putting myself on the camera and then having to like look at myself editing and stuff and then I don't know I just feel like I have a little bit of fear of a fear but the best way to get over a fear is to go head on into it and just get over it so yeah so I kind of just want to do some videos of me talking like you actually see me um I've been wanting to do that for a while I have filmed some in the past but then I looked at it and I was like ew do I look like that really <laughs> do I really look like that do I really do that with my eyes or whatever um, so, I don't know, I feel like I want to, I, just, I don't know though, so, if I, if I ask you guys, what do you think, I feel like you guys will say, yeah, just do it if you really want to do it, it's your channel, so, I think I will do it, it's, it's time, I think, and I, I feel like sometimes I really just want to talk to you guys, but I always just have to use City Skylines as my background instead of looking at me, if that makes sense, like, but I can't always use City Skylines as the backdrop to what I'm saying so I feel like I just need to put myself in the camera and get over it so anyway I'm rambling on but um, thank you guys for watching and I'll be back very soon with another video don't forget to leave a comment um, outlining your thoughts about anything I said today so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon bye for now